Hello, everyone, and welcome to the New Earth Shaman podcast. This is Barbie Ventura from The Seeker's Place. I am a New Earth Shaman, medicine woman, and spiritual awakening guide. Hey, Barbie. Firstly, just to say, and hi, everyone, just to say thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute honor. Um, I'm Sarah Palgrave. I'm a shamanic practitioner, theta healer, angelic Reiki master, and I coach for mental health and mental wellness. Um, ah. And it's an absolute delight to be here. Thank you. So excited. We're so excited, everyone, that joined us today um, to be here and to just welcome all of you to the first welcome. episode. Yeah, we're here. Um, I feel I'm, I'm so excited. It's hard to contain my excitement. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah, I've been excited all day. And I just think it's a wonderful, um, you know, we always have great conversations and to come together to share and um, to create this space is a real honor. So thank you. Yeah. So everyone, um, before we get started, uh, I would just love to invite all of you to come into the present moment with us and come into your heart space. So the sort of uh, format of how we're going to do these podcasts is we're going to get into our heart space and we are going to have this intention to co-create together that serves the highest good of all. And so from there, the energy will really support us in our topic and our discussions. And so it's important uh, to us to create the container in order to set that space before we dive into everything we're going to share today. So um, at this time, if you would like to just join me in your heart space, however you feel best to get into that space, take some deep breaths. Come into this present moment and take time to just honor yourself for taking this moment for yourself, for your journey. And we'd like to set the intention now to co-create together in a way that serves the highest good of all and serves the collective during this time of ascension. We'd like to welcome in the four directions to hold us in this sacred container now. As we open this space for beautiful co-creation, thank you all so much. Hmm. Beautiful. Thanks, mommy. Yeah. Okay. So, wow. I can already feel the energy. It feels, it feels really, really Me good too. to be in, in here. <laughs> so too. we're so excited because today we're actually going to be sharing um, some of the inspiration and intention behind this podcast. Uh, before we get into our topic, which focuses on how healing is part of the core foundation of the spiritual awakening process. So today is really just going to be an opportunity to get to know us and what our message is, what our intention is for sharing this, and how we can sort of evolve this uh, process as we all evolve to as a collective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's so much, um, I think what we've come to, you know, we've started off having, you know, discussions and chats about things that are relevant to us, right, and things that are happening to us, around us, and things that uh, we're, we're feeling. And I think what's really become apparent, you know, recently and more and more is that if something is relevant to me, you know, something is coming, it's showing up for me, um, or it's a theme that keeps coming back, you know. I know if something's relevant to me, then it's going to be relevant to somebody else. Yeah. And I think there's so many people experiencing 
different opposite emotions at the moment, but there's also a lot of people experiencing the same emotions, yeah, and, and, and very similar things. Um, so for me, I think one reason why this felt so right to do is because... You know, I'm very aware that if something's relevant to me, it's going to be relevant to somebody else. And if there's just one person, you know, you've taken the time to to listen to 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 us, to watch this, to participate, um, be in this space. And if there's just one person that something resonates with, and it makes something a bit lighter for them. You know, it's just about making things a bit lighter, bringing in a bit of understanding. Um, you know, and seeing if we can help each other through sharing to kind of um, open things up, have a different perspective, you know, because that's so important. I know from my own experience, it's very easy to get very fixed in, in your perspective and very rigid. We tend to get very rigid as humans. It doesn't really help us, especially when there's chaos all around. So just to you know, encourage everyone, it just keep an open mind, you know, and understand that perspective is exactly that. It's just one viewpoint. It's just one opinion. Um, so, yeah, I think it was important. It felt right to me to do this for any other reasons, but for that especially, because I know that there are so many relevant topics at the moment. Mm, that's beautiful. I love what you uh, shared around it, things resonating because that's an important piece that I feel is important to just share at this point is that anything that we are sharing in this container, you know, and we are here to just share our experiences and what we feel intuitively called to share and what we've been receiving. But as always, it's you know, it's up to you to use your discernment and to take what resonates and leave the rest because throughout, you know, the spiritual awakening journey, so much of the lessons and the experiences are there to really teach us, you know, self mastery and spiritual mastery and, sure. and mastering that. Yeah. And so, you know, to your point of like, there's, there's so much out there, you know, I, I felt through just through our conversations, like, you know, there's a need for how to walk this path, especially if you are being called to being a healer, because I, I know I, I talk to a lot of people who feel called to be a healer and step into that, you know, role because they feel so strongly called to. And it's like, well, how, how can I do that? And how can I do that safely with integrity? Yeah. And that allows for the greatest transformation for not only myself, but for the people that I'm working with, because it is a co-creative process when you are facilitating healing for someone. And so, you know, just through our conversations and how deeply we resonate with those types of um, just sort of uh, staples or like foundations of being a healer and like what it, what it means to really embody that role and like it's not just something you do. It's like your lifestyle and it's, it's what you yeah. embody. And so throughout the conversations, you know, it kind of sparked all of these different um, ideas of like, well, how could we share these messages? Because you and I have both been on the path for, <laughs> for quite a long time, like moving through all of these things, yeah. sort of figuring it out for ourselves. Sure. Yeah. And I think one thing that's, you know, we've mentioned and I've discussed it elsewhere as well, is that it must be very difficult in, in some ways. I mean, I forget, we, we forget how much, you know, we've been kind of on this path for some time anyway, um, you know, and it's not an easy, you know, if you expect it or want it to be an easy path, it really isn't, you know, and I mean, anything worth having in life, it's not easy, is it? You know, easy <laughs> is something that we want to make our life more simple, but it doesn't work like that. And, you know, through the course of time, you know, you step on this path, you feel like you're going one step forward, two steps back. You know, sometimes you heal something and then it just comes right back at you a year later and you're like, I thought I was done with this. So it's necessarily a, a process of going deeper and deeper in layers. 
And I found that with quite a lot of my journey, you know, and, and things that I was holding from the past where I thought I'd dealt with it and then boom, another layer comes up. And you know, things are still not easy for us with the experience that we've got, right? So I can only hold compassion and um, I have a lot of time for people who are coming to a realization now as a new thing because they're almost the the kind of the energy the mass consciousness the energy of the collective and and the way society is and world is at the moment it's kind of pushing people you know it's pushing and it's not a comfortable process mm-hmm. yeah so i do have a lot of passion for people who are this is relatively new to them um, I mean, it's a great time. It's a great time to be coming to this work, coming to yourself. It's a great time to really meet yourself. But, you know, it's not easy. So one of, the, you know, another reason really that we wanted to come here is to share and share experience because as women as well, we need to offer each other understanding compassion and a safe space for experience and sharing because everybody is at different ages in different parts of the world at different stages in their life and their journey but we've got so many things in common Mm -hmm. and I think it just gives I know if I had had people to talk to listen to at the very start of my journey I would have been really grateful for that I would have loved that and I didn't I didn't have that (laughs) so you know it's just to offer that so in in a way isn't it It, just yeah space I I love I love what you said exactly I mean I, just having those resources of like, how do I do this? Where do I start? And, and to your point, I mean, so many yeah. people are being pushed, you know, by the universe to these uncomfortable spaces where you're basically given yeah. this opportunity to like change your circumstances by starting to look at, you know, what you've created, you know, taking responsibility yeah. for, oh, that's the, yeah. you know, for this for whatever it is that is presenting itself to you in your reality and how can you begin the healing process for that? And so you're kind of given this choice of, are you ready to to walk this healing path? Because really the spiritual awakening journey is a journey of healing. It's healing all of the things that, you know, you've gone through all of the distortions, everything around your ego and really starting to embody who you really are and leave all the pieces that, you know, you thought you were, and it's this deep process. And so, you know, we have gone through this and to what you were saying, like with the levels and the layers, it's like, yeah, we, I've had that experience as well, where I felt like I had completed something, but you know, I have not because as you're consciousness expands and as as that happens and as you ascend more in your consciousness you can see things at a deeper level and you can heal at a deeper level and so having that patience and love for yourself and having like a community that supports this because it's it's not easy I mean it's it can be such a magical and incredibly synchronistic yeah. path and that is part yeah, of it wonderful. right yeah. the joy totally the joy worth it always path. always amazingly worth it um but before you get to feel a little bit of that it can feel overwhelming yes um yeah. but it takes courage and i think we, as women we need to remember who we are mm-hmm. um we need to remember you know we're too busy putting ourselves down and looking at the negative. You know, there's so many women that I know who have got low self-worth, okay, and no real appreciation for how, for their strength and their qualities. Mm -hmm. You know, if you ask people to name what what are your five best qualities, if somebody isn't going to tell them that, they're going to struggle. They really have to, you know, I don't, don't like to say or they're not really tapped into and Mm. there's an idea of um having that self-love and respect as as, um some type of vanity and it's so that's such a distorted 
um, and unhelpful view of self-love and it has to go it really has to go you know we have to learn to offer ourselves the same time love respect compassion and understanding as we would to your, your child or a stranger sometimes people are nicer to strangers than they are to themselves mm. you know and I think this is one reason why I've always been drawn to all through my life personally professionally to mental health now combining it with this energy work because for me everything starts with how you speak to yourself you know and everything's linking in you know stuff that we've discussed in the past things going on on the exterior and people you know in our own personal work and people who are waking up to wanting something different in their life wanting a shift or or a change it has to come back to you there's nothing outside of yourself that can do that for you you know and that's with regards to your gifts and talents your self-worth you know whether you love and respect yourself don't expect anyone else to respect you if you don't respect yourself and I think as women we're starting to realize that we've been doing it wrong because we feel empty mm. and we feel lost and we're not getting the love we deserve and everything we're looking outside of ourselves. You know, why do I keep attracting this type of friend, that type of relationship? You know, why do I always feel like, shit, even though I've got everything that could make you happy, right? A great house or family, a car, nice job, whatever it is, it's not going to make you happy because inside you're not valuing who you truly are. So for me, the path of healing is coming back, remembering. You know, we can learn and acquire knowledge, your wisdom, and who you really remember in that. Mm. And and this is what we're here to to and to help others to do as well, so mm. that we can really start to value and love ourselves. Mm. That's so beautiful, Sarah. I really love hearing your perspective on that. And so much of it truly uh, uh, resonates. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's just it, right? It's like, how can we know we came here to be creators of our reality? And, and, you know, it's like uncovering all these pieces and unraveling all these, these uh, parts. And so, the way that we speak to ourselves is so important. And so, you know, through the means of, of what we're doing here with this intention, it's like, I, my philosophy is always, how can we guide one another that allows us to come back to ourself and to our inner wisdom? Because I love that. everything yeah. that we need is within. And so yes. a lot of times we, li yeah. we live in this type of society where people are wanting to be told what to do because that's how we've been sure. that's how we've been programmed yeah. and it's like tell me yeah. what i need to do and this path the spiritual awakening path is not it it doesn't work like that and you know there will be people that come into your hologram or your reality that tell you oh you need to do this you need to do that but through these different yeah. processes that's where you can really start to listen to yourself and be like, that doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel right for me. And so it's it's really like through the whole process of coming back and listening to yourself, but there's so much out there that distracts us from doing that. And so yeah. by sharing what we have learned and, and knowledge, it's like, we, you know, we're not here to tell anybody what to do. We're just here to help guide you so you can begin to uncover what you are feeling, what you feel guided to do and to listen to yourself. And for me, you know, I, I would have really appreciated a guide along the way. And eventually as I got deeper, I was able to find mentors and they helped me, you know, but it was this whole sort of, un and it still is like, my path is still unwinding. Like it never stops. Right. Yeah. Like even when you reach certain levels, like you just keep going, it's a spiral. So yeah one of the things that, you know, um, that I, I want to share in, um, today's message is that 
so many of us receive these intuitive hits, right? We receive these intuitive hits that come in where we feel like we should be doing something because we yeah. had this like, oh, that feels right. I feel like I should do that. But then the ego mind comes in and is like, nah, I don't think you should. That's risky. Is that really true? Yeah. Did, you, did you make that up? Like it does all these things, right? Where it's a million to, reasons like, not to. A, a, a million reasons not to. And so a big part of like your own awakening process is like listening to that and taking inspired action on it, right? So yeah. I, I really want to support that. And by sharing the story of, um, I've had so many opportunities where I would receive a vision or a knowing or a sense, or like something would come in and I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to do that. And then I wouldn't take action on it. And then what well, it blows up in my face, right? Like if I don't listen to myself, it turns, yes. especially the deeper you go when you don't listen oh, to yourself. Yeah it becomes way more apparent, like, okay, you didn't listen to yourself. It, it schools you right away, you know? <laughs> yeah, the energetic bomb that we were discussing previously, you know, something the universe will just come in and go, no, 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 no. You knew that was wrong. <laughs> it's it funny how it works. Sequential. Like, really? Yeah. 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 So, it's yeah. fun. It's funny how it works because it's like confirmation. Like oh, I just, if I would have listened to myself, you know. So eventually, you do that enough that you are like, nope, I'm listening to myself. Like I, I know what this means. So we had gotten together a couple weeks ago. Um, time is so weird. It feels like it was a long time ago. Um, it does, but it was, actually. time is just very tricky right now. Um, but we had gotten together and, you know, had some really good conversations just about everything going on in the collective and just all these different things that we're witnessing in the community. And, and so then, um, later that night I took a shamanic journey. And so in my journey, I had been receiving all of this, uh, these downloads of information to bring back in. And so, you know, I was receiving that, like, you know, there's like this new energy that's out there and it's different from the old energy and parts of the way that I would, you know, label myself didn't feel right. And I don't necessarily believe in labels, but it's important to share with people like what you do, because how are people going to know what you do or what you can, you know, help them with if you don't sort of share with them in a way that is digestible. So I received that, you know, there's like all of these new healing modalities and these different things coming in. And so it's really about like, like, uh, I'm feeling called to sort of express myself in a way that can share what these new energies and new frequencies are that I have been accessing. And so I received like new earth shaman and I was like, Oh yes, I really like that. And then yeah, I was like, that's, that's taking that's me right. somewhere. I was like, where is that taking me? So then it continued to show me, I was like, well, how do we sort of like get this energy out there? And, and so people can feel it because it feels different. There's hope to it. There's this, um, this yes. new found like expansion where you can feel how quickly things are transforming, but yes. it, it's not yeah. like the old energies that we used to work in. Right. So then I had this vision. So I'm journeying. And then all of a sudden I see you, Sarah, and I see us working in this space energetically. And then I just saw it like the new earth shaman podcast. And then I had all of these major like downloads drop in with like what, what the messaging is, like how to serve the highest good ball with it. And it all just came in and I was like, wow, wow. That's pretty cool. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So, so it all came in and I'm like, okay, so that, and, and my point with all of this is like, okay, so we take these meditations, we take these journeys, we, we go within and then we receive if we are, you know, if we're in that space where we're able to receive, then our higher self can bring in this information for us to take action on in our reality yes. to, to, ju- yeah. to sort of create what we are being guided to create. So then it's like, okay, how do you take what you receive and put it into action? Because that's when real transformation happens. 
is absolutely acting on what you receive because you can receive all day long, but if you don't do anything with it, it's not going to actually manifest into what your reality no. is. It's not going to change anything. And also I think what it does as well is it, it tips away at your self-confidence and self-respect, I think, um, because somewhere in you, you know that you're not going for that thing. You know, there's there's a part of you that, and I think for me in the past, that was to do with playing small. You know, it was to do yeah. with that small version of myself or not, that didn't want to be seen or heard, that had fear about being unapologetically myself. So for me, when, when I, I used to get quite a lot of guidance in different ways, mostly, you know, before you're really tuned into yourself, you get what people call the gut instincts, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I, I knew I'd get a little bit of a sinking feeling if I would ignore my gut instinct and just carry on regardless. Like say, for example, with a relationship or because you tend to make excuses for people. So I'd ignore that gut instinct and, and carry on anyway. And guess what? It doesn't end well. Not really. And every time you, you don't have the courage to listen to yourself and to really and to take action, I think it chips away a little bit at you. It makes you feel more unworthy. It, it reinforces that negative energy that's keeping you small. Mm, wow. And it's, it's definitely a lot of power in taking action. And even if you don't know what to do or how to do it, you know, don't get bogged down with the big things, the big steps, the big vision. One small, anything that's in the direction of that thing. I mean, the example that you gave, Barbie, was a very literal thing. You know, you saw something. And then when we spoke after that, you you explained your journey to me. And I want it's funny that because when we were last talking, I had a, a split second vision of us both speaking together on Zoom. And I knew that it was something to, you know, work related. And <laughs> and you were like, and, and that's synchronicity for you, isn't it? That is mm -hmm. the universe validating your experience. If you need validation, there it is. Mm -hmm. So straight away, we're like, right, let's do this. When are we doing it? But, and that's a kind of obvious progression, if you like, whereas some messages and things that come in, visions, you know, thoughts, however it comes to you. And for some people, it won't be as clear. And it might take a little bit more um, to work out, to unpick the message. But, you know, don't be disheartened with that. Just have faith enough to take one step in the direction of that thing. Mm -hmm. Because that is sending a message to the universe. I don't really know what you're telling me, but I am prepared to listen. I'm prepared to have faith. I'm prepared to open myself to what you're trying to tell me. And I was thinking about this in the car earlier, actually, because, you know, all my life, my two most, I didn't really understand it, but I'm clairaudient and clairsentient primarily. So I've always heard things and I feel, and that's just always the way that it's been. But then I realised over the last, and I've only really realised this in the last six months or so, I've got rigid with that. So say now, for example, we're talking about listening to our intuition, listening to the inner guidance or instinct, whatever you want to call that. I was taking that literally because I was hearing things. So... I was listening and when I wasn't getting it in the form that I was used to it coming in, I thought I wasn't getting anything at all, right? Mm -hmm. And about six months ago, I've got a most amazing, in fact, they're right here, the most amazing cards, Akashic Tarot. Mm -hmm. Now, I kept pulling a card in there, which is 
higher self. And the image on the card is like a spirit or an angel knocking at the door. And you can see inside the house, there's a lit room with somebody sitting at a desk, working, lights on, but they can't hear the door knocking. And the message of yourself is trying to speak to you, but you're not listening. It can't get through. And I can remember thinking, hold on a minute. You know, I'm really tuned in. I'm always listening out. You know, what's going on? There was a disconnect. But what I've realised is I've got very rigid in my perceptions of what it is to receive information. And actually your higher self, whatever you want to call it, is trying, is speaking to you all the time in different ways. And what I've realised recently is that everything that comes into my awareness, everything, every person, every experience, every situation, a job, a relationship, an argument, someone pisses you off, whatever comes into your awareness and your field is your higher self trying to communicate something to you. And if you don't like what that is, you have a choice as to whether to accept that or not. So really your higher self is always talking to you and always trying to communicate, you know, do you want this or not? What are you going to do about this? Is this what you chose? You know, and always asking you for participation in creating your own life. But when we're like closed down to that, you know, because we tend to get very rigid, we're like tunnel vision, you know. So just to say, you know, if you're new to this as well, be prepared to accept and receive to hear with your whole body with every sense, you know, you might get a message that hits your gut or your feeling. You might get an, a message through an experience that you have or something that comes into your reality or a person that's really triggering you. You know, what's that trying to, what is it asking you for? What is it asking you to do? Um, because this is a little bit like a trail of clues that you have to follow. Mm -hmm. And you have to, um, you know, really embrace with with courage, actually. Yeah. I mean, it does take courage to face. It's asking you to face yourself a lot of the time. Mm. Wow. my dear. That is so beautiful. That's really taking me deep into my heart space right now. Um, and what what you said, like that, that leads me to the question, which I always share with clients is, ask what is this trying to show me yeah right because everything absolutely. that's happening is trying to show you something absolutely yeah it's it's not by accident and you know there's i mean there's so many layers and levels to this and and these are these are the kind of topics that we're going to get into with this you know, it's like everything we're kind yeah. of talking about today. It's like this, these are the types of things that we're going to get into and we're going to focus on, you know, today we're just kind of sharing like the different aspects of what we're going to be talking about. And, you know, especially, um, you know, as healers, we are, we have sort of like this um, 30,000 foot view, right. Of, of how all of this can come together. And so trying to like bring that down to earth more to take like practical steps. But, yes. the, you know, the thing that we're focusing on today is really all coming back to listening to yourself. And so you can start small, you know, it doesn't have yeah, to be definitely acting on these huge visions, right? Because yeah. sometimes, and this is what happened with me earlier on in my journey, I would get a giant vision of something and I'm like, wow, that's really big. And then it yeah. would shut me down because I'm like, how am I yeah, supposed to do Me happen? too. You know, like, <laughs> I know I'm supposed to do this. How am I supposed to do that? You know, and it's like, really whoa, overwhelmed. Still, like, all you got to do, like, it's basically like they're, sh they're showing you, Hey, this is where this can go. If you, if you continue to do this, you know, if you continue to listen and, 
And, and, and you know what, it's, it's accurate. I mean, it's happened. It's like a lot of the stuff that I got visions about several years ago has come to fruition now. And Mm. it's, but, but the reason why it has is because I've continued to listen to myself and like, no, like, Oh, I'm, this is, I'm coming at a crossroads. Like this is another pivotal point for me to make a decision. Am I choosing to do things the way I've always done them, which has gotten looping in the same thought forms and the same cycles, the same patterns, or can I make a different choice to break myself out of this? And it's going to be difficult, you know, because breaking habits or patterns is challenging. Like that's what doing the work is, you know, when you hear about people talking about, what does doing the work mean? It means like showing up for yourself, respecting yourself yeah. to make healthier decisions, mind, body, soul, you know, all of it. Like doing yeah. the things of like, what will my future self thank me for? And yes. thinking That's of it so from that powerful. perspective, right? Like what yeah. is my higher self going to thank me for? What would my higher self do? Like what is the greatest version of myself? What is What are they oh. doing? It's so powerful and I don't care what the decision is or what it is that you're trying, you know, just to think that, to bring in that that question. Mm-hmm. It's really very powerful, you know, because <clears throat> that version of you, it's not, it's not unrealistic. It's not in the distant future. It's not something that you have to attain or that it's, separate from you or foreign to you even if it feels a million miles away that version of you is part of you and it (laughs) represents every possibility that is available so it's so yeah do you know what Bob? that is such a powerful question to ask Mm, um, this feels so know. good right now. Like it does. This, this, this energy, it, it really feels like the energy that's here with us, like in this container is, is just really supporting that because, you know, yes, definitely that, you know, you came here to be a conscious co-creator, right? Like it, yes. you know, there's so much more to just what, like, do you, you know, and those of you who feel called and feel drawn to listen to this kind of material and in this frequency, like you can only perceive what you're a vibration of. So you, if you are resonating and vibrating at this level, like there's a reason for that. And so continuing to follow that and, and follow what you're curious about and what makes you excited because that is like your soul calling you home to what that's you right. To yeah. Do. Yeah, it's such a beautiful process. And so many times we don't allow ourselves to like feel that because of judgments. And we can get into that more too. I think oh, that's a huge all, all by itself, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. massive all by itself. I mean, you could unpick with everything that we're mentioning, as you've said, you could unpick a whole conversation, a whole topic, a whole session. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you said, just bringing in these these different threads because each one, you know, you can form a study, if you like, in itself. There's so much information to unpack. Um, and what you said about how as well, that's really important to me in, you know, it's become very apparent to me in in the last year, but especially very recently. It's wonderful to, you know, how many self-help books are out there? Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many self-help books and there's some amazing and wonderful teachers, great conversations happening. And you read and you come away and you're like, right, that's what I need to do. But how? You, there's no, you know, there's not everything presents you with how to actually get there. We talk about the de- we talk about the point that we're at now, or we were in the past. We talk about the desired result or the the destination, but how do we actually get there? You know, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of people that want a quick fix. It's not going to mm-hmm. happen. Yeah, it doesn't exist. It does, it does not exist. 
you know it might exist if you, you if you want to you know numb things out by different methods or however you, you know numbing it out in some way but it's still there afterwards you know it, it's it's still there and what you were saying about the soul as well you know if you don't follow the good feelings that your soul is giving you like that makes me excited I'm really interested in that I mean, I used to dumb down my my intelligence and my interest in history. And, you know, I'm a real history geek. I absolutely love it. But I dumbed down a lot of my academic intelligence because I was I wanted to be more cool. It wasn't cool. Right. When I was. So we make ourselves small to fit in with other people. Mm -hmm. So now there might be people who are really interested in these topics all right, but they've got, you know, it's different. It's not something that any of their friends do. It's not something their partner or their family does. And they've, you know, people are, make funny comments or say, oh, you know, what's, have you gone a bit bonkers, whatever. And it stops people. The fear stops people. But if you don't act on the, the curiosity, the excitement, the interest and the initial push, what will happen is you'll end up getting the opposite feelings because your soul if you're not allowing your soul any part in your life and you're not allowing your true self and your real heart any part in your life eventually you're going to get depressed you're going to feel like crap and you're going to end up I mean I ended up crying all the time for no reason <laughs> You know, and I had this deep sadness and this deep emptiness and just crying. And, and I, you know, I've, I've spoken about this with some of my clients where they've got to the... A lot of people come to shamanic work when they've tried everything else. Mm -hmm. yes. They're desperate. They've yes. had enough. They're sick and tired of feeling the way they do. Mm -hmm. And they've tried everything else. And it's that feeling of, I can't do this anymore. And your soul will speak to you in that way if necessary. <clears throat> so it's very important that you follow what makes, what lights you up, what makes you feel interested, what expands your mind and your heart. You know, and, and, and we all know the difference in feeling between something that expands your energy mm. and something that contracts it and makes you feel small. Mm. You know, and we need to start to, to make the choice and the decision to think enough of ourselves to move towards what makes us expand and feel good. You know, and that in itself, that movement towards that, it sends a message to the universe. It opens you up. And then more things that make you feel like that will come in. But, you know, to have that commitment to yourself, you are the most important person in, in this universe. Mm, oh my gosh I love that so much that's so wise and true. it is true I mean and sometimes <clears throat> the universe does have to push you like you have to get to that point where you're so miserable yeah. literally like I can't do this anymore I need to make a big change and I mean that's happened for that happened for me where I made one of the biggest you know quantum leaps in my journey was when I trusted myself enough to make the choice like I was so unhappy. I had lost myself so much and, yeah. and I was so disconnected from myself that the universe, you know, my higher self was like, look, you, are you ready to do this? Because this isn't working for you anymore and yeah. it's time. And so it was like, yep. And as soon as I did, it's like instantly everything changed. And like, because I open myself up and like that will happen. And then it's like, okay, so you, you make a big jump and you instantly can feel the energy shift, you know, and then it's up to you to continue to do that because that is not going to happen all the time. It's like things will shift, but you have to keep working at it and you have to keep, like you said, the commitment to yourself. And so, especially, you know, there, and as you get deeper onto the path, you know, you recognize that, you may need energy healing done. You might need some work. You need someone to hold space sure. for you because, you know, what I've noticed is so many times we go through these, you know, our journeys, our paths on our own, and not everyone gets the help that they need because there's a lot of shame around getting help for dealing not with it. Yeah. And I mean, that's another piece that we can really talk about, especially um, 
you know, with how shamanic healing helps with that. Um, but so many times there's this like stigma around getting help for, you know, mental health, as you well know, you know, you're very well versed in that or even emotional health or expressing your feelings or being too sensitive and, and yeah. not going to therapy because you're, you know, concerned with, you know, I don't want people to think I'm crazy. And it's like, no, you're just trying to get healthy. And, and yeah. so many times we go as, as we are living this human experience, our ego is subject to all of these traumas and experiences and we carry them with us. And then we wonder why we feel so heavy and bogged down. It's like, cause we never yeah. cleared these things. We never released and healed them. And so as we begin to awaken more and, and feel that call of our soul and listen to that, it gives us an opportunity to really look within and look at, you know, who we are and our story and how we can begin to let that story go. So we can fully, you know, be the multidimensional being we came here to be, but it, sure. it time. It's beautiful. Thank, thank you. So it takes yeah. time. To take and so I think you know, the intention of us doing this and holding this container together is to just sort of come as a space of like a resource for people and for those who are interested in healing and interested in wanting to take it to the next level. And also for those who feel called to being healers, you know, we're going to talk about that of like what it really means, because when you, when you step onto the path of a healer, it's like another type of path because you have to really become a master of your own energy. And then because you have, you have to, in order to hold space and facilitate that for other people, if you are so in your own stuff and your own things, if you haven't done your work, it's going to, it's going to affect working with people and you're going to get triggered and things like that are going to happen. And it's all part of the process, but something that, you know, I've just felt so connected with you, Sarah, on is like how to really walk this path with integrity and yes, to, integrity and, is and, everything. And yeah. to like, you know, have someone that we can sort of like talk about these things with, like have a community of like healers who are like, Hey, like I, you know, we don't know everything. We're still learning ourselves. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know nothing. Sometimes I feel like I know nothing at all. Well, I know. Sometimes I go through another level of awakening. I'm like, well, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Yeah. And and that's something I also just want to share is like what we're doing, you know, like it's it's January 2021. Like this is what we're sharing from this level of our consciousness at this point in our journey. And we could have totally different interpretations of it in a year from now because we've expanded that much more, you know, which is the cool thing. But the beautiful yes. part is, too, is that anyone who needs to hear this message or resonate with this message will hear it when they need to. And that's how this vibrational universe works. It's like when you're ready to receive and hear something, it's going to appear, it's going to manifest in your reality and, and you can hear it then. So there's, there's knowledge in that. I mean, I've been finding teachings and, and just other things that were, were put out eight years ago, but they resonate with me now because I'm at that point, you know, and I wasn't yeah. when it came out. So, so there's a lot of value in that too, of just how to, you know, know how all the different pieces of this process work. And you mm -hmm. find more of that out the, the deeper you go. Yeah, that's, is yeah, that's, it's so relevant, isn't it? It's so helpful. I mean, just to, you know, having these conversations makes me feel better. It gives me more clarity. It does. It gives me yeah. more clarity. It makes me feel, you know, things, life can feel quite lonely sometimes. You know, it's very easy if you're, even if you're in a family, you're in a partnership, you have friends, there's a certain type of loneliness that comes with life now. And it comes from trying to do everything yourself, trying to be perfect and being up in your head all the time. You know, the thoughts do not create comfort, quite the opposite. You know, they're, they're often fearful and, and worrisome and from the ego. And I think going back to what we were saying about, you know, really connecting with yourself and your inner wisdom that's not your head that's not going to come from your thoughts 
you know, it, it, it's just not because our minds, they're an amazing, miraculous gift, the most advanced computer ever. They're great at organizing things. They're great at pulling things together, but they're a tool. If they're ruling your life, you're in big trouble because it's like the computer gone mad and you're, you're like a programmed robot. It's never going to bring you any joy. So when we say about listening, you know, to your, to your intuition, your inner voice, and that is coming through your heart. It's coming through your heart and it's coming through the very core of your being, what represents your true self. And that is, is heart energy, not head. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why, you know, the shamanic work for me is, oh, it's just so amazing because you really do come out of your head. You reprogram yourself and you remember that you're an energetic being, you're a soul having a human experience and your mind and your tool is your tool. You know, whereas when we're in physicality and we've got no awareness of our soul or our spirituality, which is nothing to do with religion, by the way, it's being aware that you are a spirit primarily rather than a physical body. Mm -hmm. And unless we have an awareness of energetic reality, we are ruled by our head. And it's, a you know, it, it can be a really stressful place to be it's not creating happiness in the world it's creating all of the problems in the world and in people's reality so this process the shamanic work healing work in general it's coming out of your head and and down into the the heart and then you can you can feel listen hear with your whole body and you're 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 bringing that those sort of what the Buddhists call the monkey mind, you know, that you're bringing that down and out. It doesn't serve you. It's not doing any good. It's confusing. It's, it's um, creating competition and fear and guilt. It's playing on your past. Don't forget those, that mental energy has only got the past as points of reference. You know, it's only got, all of your past points of reference are based on the experience you've already had and known. And not all of that is good, right? A lot of people have gotten a huge amount of trauma in their past. But your mind is a computer. It's a receiver. It's not a, a generator. So it's just going on what it's had before. You can't create a new future with that because you're trying to create something you've never had. So it's coming out of that mind and into the heart, which involves acceptance and trust. You can't come into your heart space if you, you know, if you're then going to not accept yourself and, and carry on judging with the mind. So just an awareness there of, you know, really the necessity to accept and thank and yes that's great but it's not it's not going to serve me here this journey requires a deeper connection and it requires that heart you know trust trust in that heart and as women just one last point on that as women we've been talked our heart wisdom we've been programmed of an intelligence of our heart and our inner knowing a woman's instinct, you hear this type of, you know, and over the years, over the centuries, we've been taught not to trust that. So when we come to this work, understand and respect the fact that you are looking to reprogram yourself. You're looking to heal the trauma of the past and reprogram all those unhelpful patriarchal beliefs and this is not, when I mention patriarchy, it's not about man-hating, okay? I love men. Mm -hmm. This is nothing to do, it's not a criticism or a judgment. It just is what it is. We have grown and our ancestors have survived through a patriarchal, you know, 
time. So we have to comprehend and understand how that's affected our thought processes and our being as we stand here today. And, mm -hmm. and in that context as well, the strength and power of your female ancestors, your female line, everything that they've been through, everything that they've gone through, so you can stand here now, has incredible power. You know, if you're not feeling good about yourself or you have no self-worth, look at the bigger picture. Think about what your ancestors went through. That blood is in your veins. That is you. That is part of you. Your great-grandmothers, your grandmother, your mother. There's an incredible line of female strength there. We've forgotten who we are. We're warriors. Mm -hmm. We're not just nurturers and loving and compassionate and discerning and kind and understanding and, and knowing we are warriors as well we've got incredible strength and sometimes we need to remind ourselves that we have the courage to do this we have it you just have to believe it mm. wow that is so beautiful I that get that gets me all lit up, you know, thinking about all of that. But really, me more too. So. I get all fired up. Like, I know. Yeah, I love whatever it. Whatever it is, I could do it. Well, it's true, you know. And <laughs> and as and something that I just received while you were sharing all of that is like, that's it, right? And and you know, many of us know who are on this path that women are coming mostly first on this path and we are awakening first and, yeah. and being able to hold space for all of our men. And there are awakened men out there and, yeah. and they, you know, they're going, there's going to be more men who are also awakening, but you know, everything that we're sort of sharing and talking about is, is a way for you to hold, to learn how to hold space too, for the men in your life. After you learn how to master it for yourself, then you can begin to do that for other people while of course, filling your own cup up first, because it is important to do that self-care and self-love. And, you know, we could talk a lot about that too. So it's like, there are all these beautiful things that we're so excited. So to get much stuff to, to, to talk about. It's so yeah. exciting. I love it. And, um, so, um, so it feels like that's, um, a great sort of, um, way yes. to wrap, wrap things up today. Yeah. And so we are going to be doing these twice a month. And so we'll be releasing them twice a month and, you know, we, we're going to, um, receive and bring through, you know, topics that we receive, but also like, we would love to be able to hear like what you guys are needing, you know, help on, or what you want to talk about. Like, what do you want to hear about? What are obstacles or things that you're curious about? Because, yeah. you know, in this community, there's a lot of information that is thrown out there and, you know, some of it's great, you know, it's, it's all what it's all neutral, right. And, and using your discernment can help that. But, you know, if you resonate with us and you feel called to share or connect, you know, we would love to hear from you and um, all of our details will be in, in this uh, link. Um, you know, below the video, we'll have all of our links to connect with us. But, you know, for me, um, I'm just really excited to see where this goes and to know that we are also held by spirit in this and that it came through a Absolutely. journey. It's like, I, I'm just so honored to be able to like share this space with you, Sarah, and, oh. and just get into these topics and like, and just see where this leads because anything that is given from spirit is always yeah. very, um, it's just special, you know, it and is. it feels different. It feels powerful. And, you know, at the end of the day, like we were saying earlier, if we're guided with something and we don't share, that is a waste. There's definitely, there's so much value in the topics in, in, you know, there's alchemy in the air at the moment. There's so much possibility for greater, you know, increasing and expanding understanding, awareness, knowledge, um, purpose, and direction, you know, and heart. So to just to, to make a, an offering in that 
in that context is, you know, I'm incredibly blessed and very grateful as always. My sister, love you. Thank you. I love you. Thank you so much. And uh, everyone who listened and joined us today, uh, we're just so grateful for your presence. We're Um, grateful for you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And um, if you, um, are interested in connecting with me and co-creating or any anything or you're just curious um you can find me i'm um the seekers place on facebook um or you can just hit me up on facebook it's barbie ventura um and then sarah how can they connect with you as well yeah sure um same really just Either private Facebook, which is Sarah Palgrave, or Shamanic Mind is my business page. Um, I'll put an email link underneath that. And yeah, you know, anything at all, really. We're just just really looking to for open connection at the moment, you know, encouraging yeah. people to reach out if they feel mm-hmm. um, you know, called to in any way and to just take that step, you know, because you won't regret it. Oh, some, something that just came through too, which I felt called to share, which I'm glad it, it, my higher self was like, don't forget to mention this. Um, I took another journey the other night and what I received, it was a very powerful journey and I won't get into all the details, but what I received is that it is time for all new earth leaders to rise up and to come forward. And so that is part of what we're doing here is wanting to build this community and to encourage all of you who resonate with the new earth frequencies, with the new earth energies, with wanting to support Gaia and her ascension, supporting the collective ascension of humanity, all of our fellow brothers and sisters that are going through all of this, because everyone on planet earth is affected right now by the ascension process, whether or not they're conscious or unconscious of it they are being affected and at you who have gone through this process and are at these awakened levels of higher consciousness you get to be the observer and witness it happening so just for all of you as a reminder there is a lot going on out there and just to remember to continue to maintain your own daily spiritual practice be mindful of your energy so it doesn't get distracted and pulled out and remember that this is what you came here for you came here to be one of the beautiful souls to support this ascension process through compassion and love and standing in your sovereignty. And so um, that was a message that I, that just came through to, to share. Beautiful. And um, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you for holding space for me while I brought that through because that was whew, oh, right. That was just, it was so, it's just spot on. And it's such a powerful message to, you know, you know to, to put out and a reminder You know, you've got this, stay centered. Um, Yeah, stay in your heart Mm -hmm. and believe in yourself because you matter in this process. This process isn't happening out there. It might look like it is, but it's not. It's right here. You know, I've never, ever resonated more or comprehended more the, the saying, be the change you want to see in the world. You know, it, it bring everything back in yes. and just bring it in. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you all so much. We look forward to connecting with you in the future. And we appreciate your presence and uh, with deep, deep gratitude and love. Thank you to you, my sister, as well. Love you. <laughs> thank you, darling. Like mm-hmm. guys. Mm-hmm.